this video we'll be talking about the chi-squared independence test. The chi-squared test of independence or independence test allows us to determine whether or not two variables are related to each other. For example, suppose we wanted to know if the number of dogs and the number of cats are the same whether we are in a park or in a house. And so the way we go about computing that is that we went to five parks and we recorded the number of cats and dogs and we went to five homes and recorded the number of cats and dogs. And what we found were at the park we found 10 cats and 20 dogs. At the houses we found five cats and 15 dogs. This table is known as the table of observed counts. The first step in computing the chi-squared independence test is calculating the table of expected counts. The table of expected counts would be filled with the counts we would expect to see by chance, purely by chance alone. And so the table of expected counts is computed by first computing the total number of data points n, which is just adding all of the points together. And so we have 10 plus 20 plus 5 plus 15, which is equal to 50. Next, for each cell, um, so if we look at the upper left-hand cell of the observed table, in order to compute the expected counts for this cell, we take the row sum, so for parks that's 10 plus 20, and then we take the column sum, so that is summing the column of cats, which is 10 plus 5, which is 15. We multiply these two numbers and divide by the total, which is n, 50. And so the expected counts for the upper left hand cell is 15 times 30 divided by 50 which is equal to 9. And so if we if we would like to compute the expected counts for the upper right hand cell so that is parks dogs which is being which I'm circling right now we would need the column sum for dogs, which is 20 plus 15, 35. And we would take that 35, we would multiply it by the row sum, which is 30, and then divide by 50. And this number is 21. So if we went about the same exact procedure and we computed it for houses, cats, cell, which is the bottom left hand cell, we have the row sum as 20 and then the call sum is 15. So we have 15 times 20 divided by 50, which is equal to six. And then I'm gonna perform lastly for the bottom right hand cell. We're gonna compute that as 35 times 20 divided by 50, which is 14. And so now we can go ahead and put these counts in the table of expected counts. So now we have all the information necessary to compute the chi-squared statistic. And so this statistic is given by this equation. It is the sum of the expected counts subtract the observed counts squared over the expected counts. And you do this for each cell of the contingency table of this table. And so we see that the expected counts is 9, subtract the observed counts, which is 10. So that's right here, 9, the expected, and then the corresponding in the observed is 10. So 9 subtract 10 over the expected, which is 9. And we square at the top. And then if we did this for every cell, we see that it comes out to this right here. So 21 subtract 20 squared over 21 plus 6 subtract 5 squared over 6 plus 14 subtract 15 squared over 14. 
and so I went ahead and did this calculation separately and what this calculation amounts to is 0 0.396 and so our chi-squared statistic is 0 0.396 now another piece of information that we need are the degrees of freedom and so the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of rows subtract one times the number of columns subtract one which if we look back at our table we see that we have two columns and two rows and so this comes out to 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 which is simply equal to 1 times 1 which is equal to 1 and so putting th these two pieces of information together our chi-squared statistic is 0 0.396 396 with one degree of freedom and so if we think about the chi-squared distribution what that looks like that generally looks like this and so this value of 0 0.396 falls roughly at this position or I should say it falls in a position such that 50% of the area of this curve is to the right of this point and so this point right here if we were to shade in the area right here the area to the right of this coordinate on the x-axis this area is equal to 0 0.528 and so w if this area was below 0 0.05 we would be able to reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis in this case is that there is no relationship between the number of cats and dogs and being at a park or in a house so that's the null hypothesis if if our p-value which is this area given right here if this was below 0 0.05 we would reject the null hypothesis which would mean that there actually is a relationship between being at a park and being in a house and the number of cats and dogs but because it is 0 0.528 we actually fail to reject the null which means essentially the number of cats and dogs are is not different what you know depending on whether you're in a park or at a house so what value would we have needed in order for for this to be statistically significant and so it turns out that that value is about five slightly less than that but five would come five would come out to a p-value of about 0 0.025 which is less than 0 0.05 and so in that case we would actually reject this null hypothesis that there's no relationship meaning that in fact there is a relationship and but because it was actually the actual chi-squared value is 0.396 and our actual p-value is 0.528 um, we failed to reject the null hypothesis and so there's actually nothing really going on between the park and the house and the number of cats and dogs and so that's it thanks for watching